Okay, all right. The next person up is Ruthford Ayandi, who is a PhD candidate in nutrition with faculty mentorship by Dr. Elena Carbone. Ruth first, kick it off. Okay. Can everybody hear me, Claire? Okay. Yes. Okay, hi. So I'm from the Department of Nutrition and today I'll be pre presenting on an exploratory study to find the gaps and barriers in nutrition education intervention for pregnant women in Tamale, Ghana. Um, it is well established that nutrition education can help improve maternal um, health outcomes. And because of this, I want to develop nutrition education interventions for women. But such interventions should take into consideration community specific gaps and barriers that might impede um, this process. And so this is the first phase of my study where I tried to identify what these gaps and barriers were. I conducted eight focus group discussions that engaged health professionals and pregnant women in the area. And um, transcripts from these focus group discussions were thematized. Um, I would want to highlight from this table that um, a lot of the women that I um, interviewed had less than tertiary education and all of them were under 35 years old and there were 13 women in total. The health professionals were 34. So the emerging themes that arose that explain some of the gaps and barriers to the delivery and implementation of nutrition education were sociocultural factors, which dealt with constrained um, autonomy of the mothers because of patriarchal norms. A lot of them um, had, there was a lot of spousal control and because of that, they couldn't take decisions on their own regarding their nutrition. There was also food insecurity issues because of low socioeconomic status. So they couldn't always afford some of the recommendations being made to them. In terms of communication, some mothers reported that they were dissatisfied with the health delivery system. And because of this, they ended up using more of the traditional birth attendants than attending um, the clinics for antenatal care. Also, the content of NE tended to be heavily focused on anemia prevention, which makes sense because iron deficiency anemia is quite prevalent in the area. But then the mothers did mention that they would also appreciate if they could receive information regarding weight and pregnancy weight gain. And finally, there were administrative factors that came up. And um, one of them was that there was a lack of professional language translation. So most of the health providers had to rely on each other or on the family members of the pregnant women to translate nutrition education to the pregnant women, which sometimes diluted the information they wanted to give. The health providers also complained that they had high workloads and that they needed um, retraining from time to time so that they could be abreast with current nutrition issues regarding um, pregnant women. So based on this information um, that I have gathered, I think that the interventions that should be designed should take into consideration some of the sociocultural, communicative and administrative factors plaguing these vulnerable women. And so the study investigators are going to continue to engage the community to find ways that we can incorporate this in the interventions that they are going to design. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Ruth First. Um, I'll, I'll kick it off. I was just curious, what other information did you obtain from your field observations related to nutritional education, pregnant yes. women? Um, so I observed the antenatal care process. Um, let me pull up these slides. I observed the antenatal care process so that I can have an idea and for some reason, I can't see my cursor, but can everybody see the slide? Okay, so I observed the antenatal care session to see how nutrition education was being um, delivered to the women. And what I noticed was that a, a lot of these sessions were very large group sessions. Some of the women weren't even listening. They came to antenatal session, they were in a hurry to go back home. And so in my opinion, this, set, this setting is not very effective. And during the health, it was confirmed during the health provider focus group discussions where they said it would be better if they could do more one-on-one -on -one counseling with their mothers so that they can adequately explain um, information to the mothers. I did realize though that there were some resources that they had. For instance, they had the antenatal booklet that contained some nutrition education, but of course this was in English. And so if mothers can't read or write English, this might not be very um, helpful to them. And there were other 
posters that were sometimes clustered around the antenatal setting, um, which I think serve their purpose, but might be limited in exactly how much information they can give to the women. All right, very good. We have a question from the Dean. Um, beyond iron uh, deficiency, is there a food supplement program? Yes, there are iron, iron supplementation programs that go on, but then um, a lot of these are driven by donor agencies. And so immediately the donor agencies leave the program stop. And one of the problems that came up during the health provider focus group discussion was that there, was, there were times that they ran out of the iron and they didn't have it, iron and folic acid, and they didn't have it for the pregnant women. And the pregnant women have become very used to receiving these things at antenatal sessions that when they come and they don't get them, they become dissatisfied with the process. So it, they do have these um, programs running, but then they are not being run as effectively as they should because of funding issues. Okay, very good. We have a question from Laura Vandenberg. Uh, forgive me, I'm, I'm sure this is a basic question. I've never done quanti qualitative research. The question is, what method is used to thematize the focus group data? Okay, so you can do this manually or you can do it with a, with a software, but because my focus groups were in very many, I did this manually. So I, first of all, I listened to audio logs. So over here, um, yep. So I listened to the audio logs um, from the audio um, data, and then I also looked at the transcripts and then I, 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 categorize the information based on the themes that look similar. Of course, there were overlaps. So for instance, if you look at the communicative issues, someone might argue that if, if the women are dissatisfied with the uh, midwives, it might be an administrative issue and not a communicative issue. But then I, I, I felt that it was more of a communicative issue because it, it dealt with interpersonal relationships between the midwives and, um, and the pregnant women. And yeah, so basically it was, it was done manually. I went through the data and then I grouped the data based on the themes that seem to cluster around in terms of um, similarities to what, what factors they were addressing. Okay, very good. Uh, one last question. Are there nutritional uh, nutrition guidelines for pregnant women in Ghana? There, there is a nutrition policy in Ghana and a lot of the nutrition guidelines are based on the international guidelines that are given by the WHO. Um, but there is no standardized way of delivering these um, nutrition interventions to the women. And that is the gap that my research is hoping to fill. Like it's been done differently in different facilities based on what resources are available um, in terms of translation services, services and in terms of supplementation. And I think that there should be a way in which we can incorporate um, the strengths of each community to develop some kind of standardized um, nutrition education program for them. Okay, um, I think that's, oh, we, I think we are seven and a half minute mark. Uh, Dr. Surgeon, just uh, uh, type something in. Uh, how do you recruit the women for the study? So the women were recruited from the antenatal clinics. Um, we informed the nurses and the hospital administration that we're going to um, conduct this program. And so the nurses were very helpful in conveying that information to the mothers as a group during their group sessions. And then after that, we, we approached individual mothers randomly and then spoke to them about the research and asked if they were interested in um, participating. And once they were interested, they went through the consent process and then we scheduled them to come for the focus group discussion at a later time. Okay, I think that's, that's what we have to, for right now. Thank you so much, Ruth First. That was a great, great little talk.